Hello and welcome back to my flower and vegetable garden. Here we are again because I found something interesting yesterday. A bug which I have never seen before and it got me curious. I captured it. Now it's in this thing over here. This plastic container. So the bug is right there. Right now as it sits in its container what you can see now is the beak and I will explain you later it was a moment when you could see the beak you see it has a huge beak and on its back it has um, this kind of um, what should I call it cog like wheel structure or something so you see well, let me tell you a few things about this bug because I did a little bit of research. Now you can see it really well. Uh, I did a little bit of research on the internet and you know how internet goes. There is a lot of information out there that you should not always trust. Sometimes it is confusing. It was confusing for me too because based on the information that I found on the internet, I wasn't sure whether this bug was or is a wheel bug or an assassin bug. So some websites talk about these two things, assassin bug and wheel bug, as being two different things. Well, I eventually figured it out that the wheel bug uh, belongs to the family of assassin bugs. So it is actually an assassin bug. And now we can see it way better. So my source, which is reliable and I trusted, and this means that the information I provide is correct, comes from the Department Department of Entomology of the University of Kentucky. And that's a good thing because I live in Kentucky. So this information comes from a source which is from Kentucky. So they... Um, uh, consider this bug, the wheel bug, as being actually the largest assassin bug that exists and lives in Kentucky. So, what I really need to know and I want to know about the bugs in my garden is whether or not they are beneficial. Are they pests or are they beneficial? Well, this bug is actually a beneficial bug. Uh, it feeds on other soft-bodied insects, which are pests usually, uh, caterpillars, moths, things like that. And it has, um, the, um, the way it captures the prey is by using its front legs. You see now it's moving its front legs. I think, what is that? An interesting move. Probably trying to clean its beak or something I don't know so it uses those front legs to capture the prey and then it pins down the prey and inserts that long beak into the prey and sucks out the fluid out of the insects so that beak is also used in defense so this bug is not dangerous. It avoids people at all costs. It's a shy bug. It stays away from us. However, if mishandled uh, or if you try to capture it or step on it or sit on it or whatever, because you see right now I'm on the deck. Who knows? Yeah, I have sunflowers on the deck. That's what they really like, sunflowers. I might end up with one over here. And by mistake, I touch it it will fight back and uh, attack you. So it will use the same beak that it uses to uh, feed uh, to defend itself. So that thing is very painful. Uh, in terms of severity, it is considered to be more painful than the sting of a wasp and the pain lasts for a long time and um, the wound um, won't heal easily. It takes days, weeks or even months uh, for the pain to just go away. So this is the bug again and I'm very happy we can actually see pretty well through this plastic container. 
so you can see that cog like structure on his thorax you can see it's right there and you could also see the beak you see it has the beak which uh, right now where is it come on come on come on there is some reflection on this plastic so yeah this is pretty much the bug that i will return to my garden it will uh, uh, feed on um, on the pests over there damaging my garden and i would not recommend doing what i did so i captured it with my bare hands so now we are going back over there i'm going to release it and uh, as i am going back i will tell you that i captured this bug with my bare hands i used to do that a lot when i was a kid and uh, i remember in my neighborhood the kids would have these contests of uh, um, you know capturing bugs uh, not bugs uh, uh, bumblebees so we would capture a few hundred of those and then count them and um, we would get stung maybe once a uh, summer <laughs> one time during the summer so we were experts in doing that so when i captured it i i um hold it by its back i was afraid it actually had a, a sting on its uh, rear end <laughs> so i didn't know that the attack might come from its head which usually happens with big bugs i i stay away from that because some of the bugs have big fangs and it hurts if they get you with that so let's see i'm going to try so where do i have a sunflower so i have the sunflowers over here but i need i want one that's um well, I don't know how to do that. I'm trying to sit the bug on it, but I don't know how to do that. Okay, let's see. Now the bug is pretty much out. Don't know if he will enjoy doing this. Come on. Go out. Yay, freedom. Come on, bug. Get out. You're free now. He doesn't want to come out. At least we can have a better look at it. Oops. So there you go. Here you are. And that's what it looks like. And thank you so much for watching. And I hope this was helpful for everybody who watched it. Thank you so much.